Thank you for joining us. For a city like Lagos, with an estimated population of 21 million people, treating wastewater cannot be overemphasized because of the danger associated with public health as a result of waterborne diseases. The goal of wastewater management is to clean and protect water. Water released from gutters and drains must be clean enough to reuse and release into oceans, lakes, and rivers. Well, General Manager, Lagos State Wastewater Management Office, Engineer Adebola Matomi, joins me in the studio to talk to us about efforts being made by the state government to address this. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you, Madam. Now, Lagos State, like we pointed out, has a population of 21 million, and it has been putting in place efforts to address these issues of wastewater management. Despite all of the efforts government have, the Lagos State government has been putting in place, we still see that uh, this problem still persists one way or the other. Talk to us about oh, the challenges uh, your uh, office perhaps might have been faced with uh, trying to address this in the state, especially ensuring that people understand the essence of ensuring safe water or wastewater management. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we need to realize that many people, they don't even know what is called wastewater. Okay, so let's begin but from that aspect. in a simple term, wastewater is good water contaminated by activities of human beings. That is, whatever we do every day with water. And that water that is affected is not good enough to be dispensed into the environment as it is. So it has to be treated. Because whatever that goes into the environment comes back to us. All right. That is just one point. And the Lagos State has been making effort long ago on management of wastewater, how to handle it, how to transport it, how to treat it before it is returned into the environment. A lot of effort has been made, but in recent times, we've discovered that what we need to do is to have a business template where investors can come in. Mm, because the state cannot handle it yeah, alone. alone. The state cannot handle it alone. Now, the, 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 there's a submission going for approval on what is called outline business case. And this will contain all challenges as far as wastewater is concerned, the solutions to the challenges, the financials of the challenges, so that when an investor comes up, you pick up the booklet and everything will be there. So very soon, as soon as that is done, then it will be easier and open to open up the field for people to participate in the management of wastewater in the state. Uh, to, just to take you back a bit, you said the, the, the state cannot handle it alone. Is this born out of the population? Uh, because one would say that if effort has it's been made over the years, it should be able to handle this head on. You see, in, in countries, where wastewater management is highly effective. Right. It, it, it will have been done before urbanization. Mm. In America, for instance, when it started, it was, the waste was being released into the bush through a pipe. When they discovered that this is causing a lot of epidemics, as urbanization is coming up there, they, not, they decided to do sewer line and a treatment plant. But here, there had been urbanization. So to do the sewer network is a big problem. That is one thing. In any developed setting, because there will be a lot of distortion in the system. Legal situation will come in. A lot of political situation will come in. As a result of all this, sewering everywhere in Lagos may not be easy. Mm. So what we are focusing on now is what we call decentralized treatment plants. That is, if you handle a keja, just a keja catchment, you see why within that area, you create a, a treatment plant there, you move down to island, you see why that area, you, you put a treatment plant there, you, Victoria Island, the same thing, there will be catchments all over. And that's what 
the government is planning to do as soon as that OBC comes out. Mm. And that will address all of the challenges? We it, believe it will address it all of the challenges? It will address most of the challenges. Most? Most of the challenges. Most of the challenges. Mm. Because what people are now doing is very, very... I have to measure a little. There's this uh, advertisement going on on biofield and biodigester. You see, these are two systems using two different technologies. And they are locally built technologies. What happened is that the biofield is not acceptable in any format. Really? Why? This, the, the, the idea, it negates the idea of clean environment that we are advocating for. The biofield is such a system that immediately you flush, there will be a media that will sieve the sludge matter. And the water will go straight and percolate into the soil. And that will go to meet the underground water. Your neighbor may be having a borehole, and that's what you are drinking, without that water being treated. That's why the, the agency is purely against it. I will set up a tax force to go over that now. That anybody that is that is uh, selling that idea or doing business on Balfield is not acceptable to the states. But on Biodigester, it's another system. In that case, there's treatment, but that system, the treatment is not up to our standard in Lagos mm -hmm. State. Well, we are working with the people involved in that to get that properly done so that it will meet up because it is cheaper. It could be used in our villages or in some in hotels. It's a, it's a minor, it's a, it's, a, it's a mini treatment plant that could be used. It's cheaper. But the biofield is certainly not acceptable as far as Lagos State terrain is concerned. Mm. But don't you think that perhaps there are gaps? Uh, that is why people are bringing in this uh, biofield, as you call yes, it? Yes, I said that because they are saying that it's an, it's an alternative to septic tank. Whereas a septic tank has its processes, it must have treated the wastewater for some days or, week, or, or months before it is evacuated to a treatment plant. plant yes. Whereas the biofield, and they said in their advert, they said there will be no residual, you don't need to evacuate, you don't need to do all this. What that is saying is this. <laughs> Let me just tell you, there's a media that sealed the, the sludge. Then the water goes down. Mm -hmm. That media that sealed the sludge, when it is removed, where do you take it to? You just throw it into the environment. The, with the germs and the bacteria. The water that is coming out of which is, which is filled with uh, 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 cancerous bacteria percolates mm. and going into our wells underground and people drink that so it's not treated at all and when that septic tank is treated and this is why it is important for a lot of persons to be enlightened exactly with that, that they should not patronize anything called biofield it's not good so you, you talked about uh, that it is not up to the standard that of is the state. That is biodigester. There that, are two. Uh, right. The biodigester is not the output, which is the effluent. Mm -hmm. It's not meeting our standard in Lagos State. What yet. is the standard? The or Lagos State standard? The standard right? is that the effluent must have a 30, 30 mm per liter of BOD, what we call bio oxygen demand. You know, it's a technical term. Mm. It must meet the minimum, that is the maximum that we, we are, is acceptable in Lagos State. And why do we accept that? The, the set, uh, in the World Bank, uh, something is 50. Right. But in Lagos State, we are filled with, we are, we are sitting on water. Right. Good. And this water that we are sitting on, if we release 50 mm into it, we don't know yet the assimilative capacity of our water. It has to be determined. That is, how much dirt can it absorb and clean and do self-cleansing. When we go around and we carry our tests all over, we found that it's only 30 mm that could be acceptable to be released into the environment. Whereas this biodigester is getting something like 60, 70. We can work on it. We'll be inviting them. 
We've been telling them to improve on the technology. And when it is so done, that is acceptable because there's an attempt or there, there's a treatment process in that. Mm. But in biofield, there's no treatment process at all. It's right. just a discharge into the environment. Because some have said that, some environmentalists are saying that uh, even the septic tank where when it's filled, it has to, you have to come and pack it up and take it to perhaps a plant mm -hmm. for it to be processed is not really uh, good for the environment. That something has to be done because the, the moment where they come to evacuate, uh, there is, it affects the environment, the foul smell and all of that. Uh, the septic tank. Mm. You see, before you carry out that septic tank or any other thing, you need to know about the soil technology. I mean, that is soil science of the area. Yes. That it, the soil texture, for instance, in Lagos, in area bounded by the ocean and the lagoon, is highly water table area. That is, before you dig into half a meter, you've met water. Whereas, in a Kedja or Jota area like this, you will not. Mm. So if you do a septic tank on island, it may not be effective. If you do it in a Jota, it's, it's acceptable okay. because of the soil texture. But however, you can't compare it to Balfield if it is done on island because it will retain this waste for about three months. And during the process of retaining it, I mean the septic tank, during the process of retaining it, there's a, a bowel reaction in the septic tank hmm. that ensures the degradation of contaminants in it. You beat it down to a level that will be, that we call it pretreatment. When it is evacuated, it will now go for proper Treatment. treatment instead of just evacuating it and discharging to the environment unlike biofield which automatically as you flush goes straight Street. onto the soil and percolates untreated and the the media the civil media eventually if it is removed it is dropped into the environment again mm. so that's the danger in biofield and that's why we're advocating that people should not patroni uh, patronize Biofield. On biodigester, there are two different things. Yes. <laughs> On biodigester, yes, we are working with them. The time is coming. We will not tell how effective that will be. But that's still acceptable to us to some extent. Mm. That is exactly what the situation is, is now. Mm. But uh, still talking about environmentalists asking that we need to be looking into treating waste where it is generated. What are we doing with regards to that? Waste where it is generated? Mm. No. Waste could be treated but not necessarily on site. When you say where it is generated, that's on site treatment. On -site treatment that's yeah. on site treatment. Yeah. You see, with what we are planning, mm. if Ikeja, for instance, treatment plants. It will be sewer from every home to the to where the operation plant is sited. It will be sewer down there and it will be treated there. That's off site. On site is this so called biofield and yeah. uh, and septic tank. Which you are saying we shouldn't accept. Biofield should not be accepted. Right. Septic tank is also on site treatment. But it takes it, it treats over a long time unlike biofield. Hmm. So that is just it. So treating it on site or where it is generated, as far as liquid waste is concerned, is not ideal. necessary. It's not necessary. It's not even ideal. It can be transferred or transported to a treatment a, a treatment center. You see, as we are t t talking about this uh, wastewater management, a lot of persons might be wondering, perhaps, uh, what are the implications, especially health-wise, uh, when we are talking about back and forth, why it is important to treat uh, wastewater and all of it, and ensuring that uh, we do not perhaps purchase or accept biofield. You see, the f the, there are two important areas we need to look at when we talk about management of wastewater. First of all, where, two areas that it affects. It, aff it affects primary health cost. How? Some people will say they have malaria. 
they will go to the hospital. Malaria will be treated. They come back home after about a week. They return. They, they return. And it rolls on like that. And every time they go, it's cost. Why is this so? Because if wastewater is not properly treated and it goes back to the environment, number one, when it percolates into the soil, and most of us now get our water through borehole. Right. Good. You are drinking that dirty water and taking in a, a waterborne disease carrying bacteria. Mm. Even if it is not percolating, during rain season, it, it is washed down to the river. Fishes take it up there. And you say you want to eat a fresh fish. After cooking it for you, this, this fish has been contaminated. And you eat it. Mm. So from all this, you develop a lot of illnesses. illnesses and that will increase primary health, health costs. Cost. The second thing, part of it is degradation of the environment. Degradation of the environment in the sense that if it is not well treated and is washed to the river, there will be a growth of plants on the surface and of the water. And when it does so, it affects aquatic life. A lot of nitrate is washed into the water and it's not, it's not good for aquatic life. That is one. The second part of it is that during the process of percolation into the, into the soil, a lot of movement, there's what is called porosity yes. in, the, in, 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 the, in the water soil texture. That is, it's like a pipe where water can be moving. Mm. The more it erodes, the worse it becomes to the environment. So there are a lot of things that could happen if water, if wastewater is not properly treated. Right. So we've been mentioning wastewater. What really constitutes uh, this wastewater that we have been talking about? Is it just water from the sewage alone? No. When we talk about wastewater, there are two major lines of it. We have industrial wastewater. We have domestic wastewater. Industrial wastewater is that water after activity, manufacturing activities in the industry, they release into the environment. That's, where, that's wastewater. The domestic water is water, wastewater generated within the homes, where you flush, when you have a bath, when you wash your clothes, when you brush your teeth. You know? Yes. That is the second part of it. In my agency, in my agency, or majorly now, what is causing major problem now is domestic. Really? It's domestic. Because the industries are trying, they are managing their own to some extent, but people individually don't know how to manage domestic wastewater. They just release it. Some people will lead from their bedroom to the drains. From their septic tank, they'll put a pump. When it is filled up, they pump into the drain. They are not helping. So that's why we are having a major problem as far as domestic wastewater is concerned. So are we having community communicators to address these issues, especially uh, when it comes to engaging people to better understand why it is important to manage water properly, wastewater properly? Yes, there's a, a annually we have stakeholders meeting. We, still have, we, we, we have a, sometimes with investors, we call it a business meeting with them. CDAs, we talk to them on proper management of this. And we also have some people we call a monitor. They are, they, they, they are the surveillance. That is, they look around where you send your pipe into the drain or where your septic tank has collapsed. Didn't do it. They come back to the report and the tax force takes action immediately and ensure that it is done. Mm. So we are trying to educate the people, and that's one of the reasons why I'm on this program now. So that for those who are looking at it, they will know that you need to size your septic tank properly. Not that 50 people be living in a house. You just call a bricklayer and say, go and do a septic tank for me. And because it does not, it, it does not familiar with sizing specifications, you will go and do a 20 people septic tank for you. And at the end of the day, you'll be having a problem. Or it is not even properly structured or done. 
some will crack and be leaking into the environment. So all this, these are the things we do in our office and make sure that we act as a consultant to the people. If you want to do it, come over. Bring your drawings. We fetch it for you. We tell you how to do it. We give you personnel to supervise. That's what the government has provided for the people. Are, are there perhaps uh, what some might say uh, penalties or to, to serve as deterrent to those who might not be you know, meeting up with the standard as required by the state? Yes, there's a law on environmental management and protection, 2017. Mm. And the law stipulates fines upon conviction. Is that in the law? So I will follow the law. How many people have been convicted so far? The issue there is this. You know, in Nigeria environment, people don't like going to court. Right. They don't like going to court. When we caught them barehanded, we now give them an option. This is what the law says. But if you are contesting it, proceed to the court, law court. We take it to court. Or if you are becoming a recalcitrant, you don't want to be forthcoming, we take it to court. But most people will not want to go to court. They would rather say, okay, but the, our primary aim is to abate the nuisance first. Absolutely. When you abate the nuisance, then the law follows. So if you, go to, if you want to go to court, it's okay for you. If you want to pay the fine in line with the law, it's okay for you. It's not, it's not forced down your church because there's, they said upon conviction, so so amount for doing so so thing. But what we are particular about is to abate the nuisance primarily. Mm. And you don't think that perhaps that could serve as abating when you talk about convictions and all of that? You see, when you ask people to abate nuisances that the majority of our ages, that particular, and giving them a short period, maybe within 72 hours, is enough stress for them. After they have must have completed that and meeting up our standard, then we, put, we tell them this is the position of the law. You can't, you can't go scot free. This is what we have done. Mm. And sometimes some does voluntarily obey. And if you don't want, you go to court. So what is the, how much is the fine? It ranges. There are, well, there are individual fines. There are corporate fines. There are industri industrial fines. So that's what it is. All right. We must thank you so much because we have to leave the conversation here now. But I want to believe that uh, a lot of persons have uh, understood what uh, wastewater management is and why it is necessary and uh, what the standard of legal state is uh, moving forward. Thank you so much, uh, General Manager, Legal State Wastewater Management uh, Office, Engineer Adebola Matomi, for your time on the program. Thank you, madam.